Hello, Dr. Brian here. Hope everything's going well. Today I wanted to talk a little bit about some of the recent releases on YouTube and how that's changing the behavior of creation and then also consumption of video content. And this is, you know, really fascinating to me. One for one, I'm creating videos right now and these are posted on YouTube, so I'm starting to see some data come through, starting to use some of the tools in a little bit more of an advanced way and just starting to learn more about the uh, what works and what doesn't work on YouTube. And uh you know, although there are uh, massive sort of competing uh, platforms for attention, TikTok, uh, Instagram, et cetera, et cetera, a lot of us still end up on YouTube as a primary driver of consumption of content. And it's a very valuable place from, from my understanding. You can curate your feeds uh, on other social media platforms. But from a YouTube perspective, once you start to, you know, make these searches, look, find the kind of information that you're looking for, you will get served up relevant, valuable content. And a big part of YouTube is the actual sort of how to, the guides, uh, and, and, and how you can learn and become, you know, better. And I think people are using YouTube in an incredible way. And that's why I, I really like it um, as, a, as a tool. I'm, so there's, you know, continue their innovation. They continue to release uh, um, sort of uh, in just add-ons or systems that then um, continue this goal of, uh, of YouTube, which is to just be sort of the, the home of the world's greatest video content. Obviously, there's podcasts and music and everything else um, that's posted on there. But uh, I think there's a, a big driver here. And one of the reasons why uh, I, I felt sort of uh, inclined to talk about this was there's this recent post and it's connected to a release that YouTube did, which is basically this engagement graph. And just to show you quickly um, what this engagement graph looks like is here. So you hover over the progress bar, you can see basically the most engaged moments within the video. So for example, here, like uh, you can see the, the, the dips and tunnels. And so the vision of the future is a highly engaged part within this video. And that's something that I'm, you know, obviously as a creator, you're trying to figure out, okay, what parts are people most interested in that I'm speaking about? That's one thing that's really fascinating, important. And then as a viewer, you are trying to jump through to the most important moments at the most valuable moments or the most engaging moments, depending on who you are, you know, what you're, what you're actually looking for. So um, this was, um, to me, it's actually a pretty cool innovation, but what Samir here says, who's an amazing creator, uh, it talked about why, you know, basically asked the question is why would YouTube do this? It feels like it's going to um, sort of cut down, yeah, cut down watch time for, for creators, which is a huge drive for them to be successful on YouTube. Uh, and he specifically points out this idea of long form content um, is going to have an impact on average view duration and thus overall performance of the channel. Uh, overall performance uh, of your, you know, your videos and you getting promoted, uh, and really, is it, you know, is this a, a drive towards more short form content or highlight reels or clips? And so, uh, there's obviously a lot of value of long form content that's being created, and yet this is being challenged, um, you know, at least in theory, um, uh, or at least being questioned if this is, uh, is is actually how the, the outcome of how this is being played. And so. There was um, a lot of uh, feedback and comments on this. Some, you know, on the side of you know these platforms hate, um, you know, hate the actual creators uh, while actually still needing them. Um, and then there's the other side of as a YouTube viewer, it's 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 very exciting because creators add a lot of fluff to boost the watch time, even though it's not necessarily good for the value of the content or worthwhile as a viewer. Um, and but overall, and yeah, sorry, Tasia's in the back here. Like there is a lot of sort of con contradictory thoughts of, of the value of this or if this was a good thing for YouTube to do. And it really does seem to be split between the, the level of creator that you are or just in general, are you a creator or a consumer? So um, there are other moments where advertisers are also looking to find where do I want to place my ad within videos. And so obviously this has an impact on sort of the monetization for YouTube. So I think there's a huge uh, wealth of sort of insights just in this thread alone. I will uh, copy this and paste it in the link. But overall, it comes from a continued drive of YouTube to innovate. I do believe, um, even though sometimes it, it hurts the actual creator itself, in the end, what YouTube is trying to do is create uh, more valuable content that users can get to easier uh, and in the end, that keeps more people on YouTube, more people using YouTube and is better for them, which is obviously an important vessel um, for this uh, 
behemoth that is that is Alphabet. So, uh, pretty fascinating. Um, one of the other things that uh, have have sort of come up here. Uh, is this idea of um, chapters. So chapters has been around for quite a while now and really all you're doing is dropping in. You can sort of see, I believe they have um, a little guide here. You, you would put in uh, the sort of timestamps. Those timestamps would then automatically populate the chapters uh, and then that would allow you to then navigate through the video more quickly. So here I just you know typed them in quickly as you can see in the video details, intro, conference, feedback on conference, and then the, the community picnic. So that then allowed me to segment the video. Um, people can hover over and see, okay, I'm interested specifically on the re research to reality psychedelic conference event. I'm not interested in the uh, picnic. Uh, so obviously from a segmentation part and then finding what's m meaningful to you, there's a lot of value there. Um, and then um, from a sort of search perspective, what you'll now see in, in, in Google search results is if someone searches for a specific item, instead of driving them to the entire video and then letting the user have, you know, not letting, forcing the user to then drive and navigate through um, all of it, you have um, the ability to actually jump to that specific chapter in the video and get the information and <laughs> content that is most relevant to you. Sorry, I just realized the, uh, uh, the face that I paused on. I'm very sorry, that was horrible, horrible, so scary stuff. Um, so overall, really fascinating, but what has now <laughs> enabled has been enabled. I'm still traumatized by my own face. Uh, and uh, you can see, you know, obviously tags, but what has been here is now this idea of automatic chapters. And they're now asking you when you um, uh, create a video, do you enable uh, YouTube to automatically create these chapters? And um, what's really fascinating, if you sort of pay attention to sort of machine learning and uh, AI and all this stuff is that the, the manual input of this that so many YouTube creators have been doing for so long now has now trained YouTube system to be able to generate these chapters automatically. And this is now, um, you know, you're now ena enabling this. It's uh, when available and eligible. So I don't think this is happening to my videos yet. And I'm actually mm, trying to figure out when our videos auto chaptered versus manually chaptered. Uh, right now, what I can see is generally there's more context um, or more d detailed descriptions when someone manually labels it. Um, but I think it, YouTube will continue to improve this and they can go as deep as looking at specific keywords and phrases um, within the video to make it very specific. But overall, this idea of topic modeling and looking at a transcript and then producing a topic out of it is not, um, is not that much of a stretch anymore. In fact, it's done for many, many systems and uh, continues to get better. And I'm sure there is some sort of mechanism where there will be some sort of mechanism for them to improve uh, these automatic chapters. So overall, I think uh, another innovation from YouTube, which um, sort of follows the same through line, which is as a creator, I want people to watch as much of the video as possible, but as a viewer, I wanna to get to the moment that matters to me as quickly as possible. And so um, there is sort of a contradiction in this sometimes that um, that YouTube then, with their releases, Tasia, uh, forces on, on, on creators. So one sec, I'm gonna get my doggy here. It's okay, buddy. Mommy will come back soon. Let's see if I can do the rest of this. Uh, with Tasia here. I guess he's going to be on the mic um, and he's unhappy already. And then, and then the last one that I wanted to touch on here is basically this idea of um, channel analytics. And now I'm doing my best to do uh, <laughs> to do this um, is channel analytics. And so channel analytics, oh yeah, here we go. We got a jumpy boy. Hey, don't hurt yourself, brother. Surprise appearance from Tasia. Um, He's gonna go back and whine, I apologize. Um, which is now when you are in your YouTube channel and you have um, you have some data coming through and mine's limited, I don't have that many people watching these videos. You can start to see uh, this, use this tool, which is a research tool within your analytics section. And you actually start to see your viewers searchers, searches over the last 28 days. And then you can see the search term, you can see how high that volume is on YouTube. And you can start to, if this makes sense, use this to then create relative content, related content or relevant content for the audiences who are already watching your videos. And I think this is a really fantastic tool. It is a, just a start based on what 
you can see in SEMrush or Google Keyword Planner, which are much more in depth, which show sort of competition level, if you're advertising on it, the cost per click, all these different insights, whether it's trending, all these things, but I'm guessing YouTube will continue to refine and grow this tool um, to improve the value of it. And then you can also, I believe you can do a search. Um, so if I do like, you know, speech recognition, let's see if anything comes up. If not, uh, here we go. You can see the same thing. So there are obviously tools, I believe vidIQ and things like that, that are helping you to buddy that are helping you do this. <laughs> it's Asia. Uh, but, um, this is, uh, YouTube using its own data specifically within YouTube to then enable this. So I think there is um, a lot of power that and value that's coming from it. And uh, we'll continue to see people become more data-driven creators using tools provided outside of YouTube and by YouTube to then create the content, make it more optimized and, and continue to grow their channels. And so I'm, you know, fascinated by this world. I love video content. I'm obviously creating it again right here, right now, talking to you. I'm trying to get better at it. I'm trying to learn. And I think, uh, you know, I'm late on many trains in my life. Um, but this is one of them ones that I'm making a bit of an investment in because um, it's already seen. <laughs> Tasia. <laughs> Mummy was uh, uh, working out, and so I uh, had uh, uh, it, it, Tasia's having a panic attack in the back, wondering where Mummy is at the moment. So, um, just to wrap this up, the uh, when you watch creators who are really p popular, professional, they are they are using data, they're using analytics to create the content that they're creating, and um, without that. Um, there are people who do create content in a vacuum and it's just good, it's valuable, the personality's great, that's fantastic and they grow to success, but more and more, especially in competitive areas or places, using analytics, using this details, using this insights is, uh, is crucial to you to grow your channel and be successful. So something uh, that I'm continuing to learn, I will share more on it. I'm gonna do a little review of the past month uh, over the next few days as I look back and see what have I learned from a month of uh, just creating sort of consistently on YouTube and if there's anything else that I'm going to do better, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, also just wanted to share a couple innovations from YouTube that I think are uh, valuable and worthwhile, if not uh, controversial. Would love to hear your thoughts if you're a creator versus a, a, a viewer. And uh, if you're watching this on YouTube, please like and subscribe. I, I, I'm realizing I'm doing no call to action uh, on this. Also check out the website, tylerbride.com, and you've got um, podcasts that are coming out through this um, and post a lot on LinkedIn as well too. So thank you as always for checking out this out. Apologize, I feel nervous after Tasia uh, came in and out of that. And I, you know, you never like to hear your dog uh, a little bit upset there. So I'm doing my best, but now I'm, I'm sweating. It's hot. Um, and uh, I'll, I'll be back to create some more videos, hopefully uh, not sweating and hopefully uh, without uh, uh, Tasia upset. Um, thank you very much. Love you all. Hope you have a good rest of the day. Bye-bye.